and sacrifice his son Isaac. I can imagine how difficult this was for him because now I got a son too. I can't imagine what it would be like to have to sacrifice any of my children. But Abraham had waited 25 years for the son Isaac and now God was asking him put your son to death yet we hear what is recorded in the third verse of the 22nd chapter it said early early the next morning Abraham cut some wood for the sacrifice loaded the donkey and took Isaac and started out for the place God told him the Bible shows us that Abraham did not waver Abraham didn't hesitate but he left y'all get up off of me he left the next morning how could he be so quick to put to death his only son why didn't he fight the emotions before finally giving in and making the trip well the answer is found in the fourth verse it says on the third day Abraham saw the place in the distance then he said to the servants stay here with the donkey the boy and I will go over there and worship and then we're gonna come back y'all not helping me he says we will come back to you if he were to put Isaac to death I wish y'all would wake up it ain't nothing but a spirit that's trying to distract the service yes he said we are going to come back when things like that happen saints of old used to start praising God y'all sitting around looking and what's in her but get up in you but the devil is a lie y'all not gonna help me it's a trick of the enemy for y'all to come to church with weights on you if an evil spirit can have joy in God's presence why can't you open up your mouth y'all not gonna help me I'm not afraid y'all don't be afraid but start praising him start glorifying we're not going in this year with demons and devils Satan get up out of here Satan you under arrest get out of our house get out of our family get out get out of our minds every spirit not like God come on out of here for the weapons of our warfare y'all not saying nothing are not carnal but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds somebody has a stronghold you need to start pulling it down and shout Jesus pull it down shout glory Get our joy, get our 
over in a new decade. You're crossing not in a new season. You're crossing not in a new year. It's not just a new year. But God says for everyone that will believe, everyone that will pray, everyone that will go forward and declare Satan, you're a liar. Satan, we come against you. Come on, church. Satan, that's why we got to fast. Because it's too much. The devil is doing. He's coming in. I worship. He's coming in. I prayer life. He's coming in. Our children. He's bringing in discouragement. He's bringing in loneliness. But God lets your power be great in the new decade. Come on and glorify it. You got to have an anointing in this new decade. I said you got to have an anointing in this new decade. You ought to lay your hand on somebody and shout be anointed. Come on, tell them be anointed. Let God crown you with his anointing. You got some demons you're going to have to cast out of your world. You got some storms that you made it through. And it was God that kept you. And it's God. says there's a pipeline 
before you in the new decade. Many of you, many of you, and I'm closing. This is why there's such a heaviness in this service. Because the enemy knows you're getting ready to go into the first year of a new decade. And he said, he said if I can steal that joy just for five seconds. If I can put a little doubt in that dream. They'll win. But just look at somebody and I'm done. And just tell them there are many people. That have felt like I've been feeling. Tell them a sense of frustration. And even recently. A lack of fulfillment. Tell them because I've been trying to operate with an extraordinary anointing dealing with ordinary people. Now some of y'all don't want to go with me with this. That's all right. But, but God told me to tell you, you are not ordinary. And everything God has spoken in your life is not ordinary. But it's extraordinary.